Yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in this video, as you both, most of you may be aware that uh, I, I put a, I, I put on many hats. I'm mechanical, electrical, accounts, business administration, and to some extent law and economics. But this evening, allow my mechanical mind to do a short video on the friction crutches, especially centrifugal crutches. You know, a crutch is simply a mechanical switch. This is what helps uh, us to be able to disengage the driver from the driven part. For example, in a car, the engine is running to transmit the energy from the engine to the wheels. It goes through the crutch. When we engage the crutch, the car is able to move because what is being done in the engine now can be taken to the wheels. When you want to stop and you don't want to switch off the engine, for example, on the traffic lights, you depress the crutch, you put the car in neutral. All you are saying is to allow the engine to continue running, but not transmit the motion to the, to the wheels. So, a crutch is a simply a mechanical switch. That which allows the operator to be able to transmit motion from the driving part, which is the prime mover, to the driven part, which is the load. Now, we have four types of, of, of crutches. They are all based on the principle of friction. There must be some parts which must engage without slip. So we have uh, plate crutches, uh, conical crutches, and also centrifugal crutches, which work on the uh, brake shoes. In this video, I will concentrate on the uh, centrifugal crutches. So the principle is that torque to be transmitted is as a result of the number of shoes multiplied by the friction force between the crutches multiplied by the radius at which the point of contact is where any is the number of shoes F is the frictional force R is the point of friction where the friction is actually taking place. So this is the guiding uh, formula in the friction crutches. In most cases, the end will be given and the error, but the friction force required is what determines the torque that can be developed. Now we know that power is given by torque. One we get how do we get the torque here? Power is given by torque multiplied by omega. So the power to be transmitted shall be given at a certain speed. So the torque shall be given from power divided by omega. Where omega is in rest per second. Or we know that power is equal to 2 pi nt over 60, which means that our torque can be 60 p over 2 
by n. That's how we can get our torque. So we can know how to get our torque. Our n will be given. Our R will be given. What about F, the frictional force? Frictional force, F is given as mu N, where mu is the coefficient of friction between the surfaces in contact. And in most cases, mu will be given. What about the normal force? The normal force will be given by the centrifugal force at full speed. The centrifugal force at full speed. Minus the centrifugal force at Engagement speed. Okay. Now we know that this is very important. But how do we get the friction force? The centripetal force at engagement speed. Centripetal force is given by m omega squared r. Always. Where R is the radius. Omega is the speed of rotation. M is the mass. In this case, this is the mass for each shoe. Now, what we know is that F is M R omega squared. We are going to have omega 1 full speed. Omega 2 Engagement speed. So the normal force will be due to the speed at engagement and the full speed. So what happens is this formula now shall be n will be equal to m r omega one squared minus m r omega 2 squared which is m r omega 1 squared minus omega 2 squared okay where our m is the mass of the shoe our r is the radius as the shoe is about to engage Omega 1, the speed at full speed, the speed at the, the full speed. Omega 2, the engagement speed. With this now, we should be able to calculate the torque or the power translated. So, We have a question uh, which is this that a centrifugal clutch is to transmit 15 kilowatts. So power to be transmitted 15,000 watts at a speed of 900 RPM. N is equal to 900 RPM. 
straight away we can get the torque here. Torque is equal to 60 P over 2 by N. So 60 multiplied by 15,000 divided by 2 times pi times Z 900. We should be able to get our torque there. If we get our calculators, we find 60 multiplied by 15,000 divided by 2 times pi times 900. We get 159.2 Newton meter. That is the top that has to be transmitted. And now we know that top is equal to number of bushels multiplied by the friction force multiplied by the radius. So we know the top, we know the number of shoes, we know the radius. What is it important now is for us to get the force. So our friction force is given as mu n, where n is the normal force. And our normal force is given as m r omega 1 squared minus omega 2 squared. So, what is our omega 1 and what is our omega 2 in e? radians per second. Okay? Omega 1 is 900 times 2 pi over 16, giving us 94.26 drags per second. Omega 2 is 3 over 4 of 94.26, giving us 70.7 drags per second. So we have our omega 1, we have our omega 2, we can bring it here, and then we get our normal force. We proceed. So, our normal force is M, which is the mass, multiplied by R, 0 0.12, the inner radius, multiplied by 94.26 squared minus 70.7 squared. What does this give us? So we have 94.26 squared minus 70.7 squared. We get 3886. 3886 multiplied by 0 0.12. We get 466. So our N is 466N for mass because we don't have the mass. So the mass will remain as M, 466M. Or we can say let the mass for each shoe be equal to X. So our N will be X multiplied by 0.12 multiplied by 94.26 squared minus 70.7 squared. And in this, when we find, we are going to get 466x as our normal force. Okay? Now that we know our normal, our normal force, we can find our friction force. We can find our friction force. Friction force is equal to mu n. So our mu is 0 0.25 multiplied by cos 60x. What does this give us? One sixteen point six x as our frictional force. Then we go back our equation 
which says top is equal to n is equal to number of shoes multiplied by friction force multiplied by radius. We know our top 159 is equal to 4 shoes multiplied by 116.6x multiplied by R 0.15. Here we use 0.12, the inner radius, when we are finding the centripetal force or the centrifugal force. But when finding the top, we use the outside radius, 0.15. So this gives us 159 is equal to 4 multiplied by 116.6 multiplied by 0 0.15 we get 69.96 x what is our x our x will be equal to 159 divided by 69.96 so our x will be equal to 159 divided by 69.996 we get 2.27 kgs that is the mass for each top for each shoe that is the mass for each shoe better after now that we know the mass, then we'll be asked to find the size of the shoe. The size of each shoe. How we get the size of a shoe? This shoe is in this format. That could be the profile of the shoe. Okay? Where this distance here is known as the length. Now, from the laws of mathematics, if this is an arc, this is theta, this is S, the length of the arc. S is given by R theta. So in this case, L will be equal to R theta. That is how we are going to find the length of the Sure. So our L will be equal to R. In this case, our R is 150 millimeters multiplied by theta. Theta is 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. 60 degrees in terms of radius is pi over 3. When we punch this or this, 150 pi. Divided by 3, we get 50 pi, which is 157.07 millimeters. Okay. This is the length of the shoe. What about the width of the shoe? We know the length of the shoe. Now, apart from knowing the length of the shoe, we need to know Gracias.